Abe no Harukas is Japan's tallest multifunctional building at 300 meters, realizing alternative urban architecture as a vertical echo city. Abe no Harukas is the first place in Osaka to be greeted by the sun as it rises over Mount Ikoma in the early morning and glows in the evening for an extended period as the sun sets over the Seto Inland Sea. Abeno Harukas is located in Abeno, the third largest railway terminal in Osaka. Approval of a floor area ratio of 1,600%, two times the upper limit for floor area ratios set by the authorities, enabled a total floor space of some 306,000 square meters, including the 212,000 square meters in the tower wing. Optimizing the depth of each floor for department store, office and hotel requirements based on service elevators leading to the underground logistics network meant that Abeno Harukas could achieve its final shape with a height of 300 meters. Facing the narrow side of the building into the prevailing westerly winds minimizes the effect of wind on the building and its surroundings. Shifting the hotel section from the center enabled the creation of an echo void that introduces natural light and wind to the core of the office section. A vertical network of green gardens on each roof creates a lush urban environment in sync with the adjacent park. Abeno Harukas is located on the Uemachi Plateau where the historical urban grid originating from Osaka Castle intersects with the Uemachi urban grid. The perimeter wall formed by these two grids creates an urban landscape in harmony with the historic townscape. The dynamic and diverse range of human activities at the station, department store, office, hotel, art museum and observatory in this building revitalizes this area while the exquisite angles of the building's exterior bring surprise and vitality to pedestrians. Preparing for Earthquakes Abe no Harukas is designed to withstand level 2 major earthquakes, which occur once every 500 years. Its design incorporates restrained deformations with the seismic core, three megatross floors, and an outrigger brace. The hybrid vibration suppression structure ensures safety in the unexpected case of a level 3 massive earthquake, which occur once every 2,000 years, as well as during near-field dislocation earthquakes and subduction zone earthquakes in the Nankai trough. The appropriate alternate operation of viscous dampers and friction dampers acts to absorb the vibration of the building. The truss frame installed on the upper levels, inspired by the central pillar design of traditional Japanese pagodas, also stabilizes the tower to realize world-class levels of safety. Preparing for strong winds. The Karman vortex formed downwind of the building sways it in the same direction and at cross angles to the wind. The periods of vortices generated by Abe no Harukas differ from the top to the bottom. Its many tiered forms set back the volume of the vortices and reduce their effects. Two different types of pendulum dampers installed at the top of the structure swing in the opposite direction to the building's period to prevent shaking, creating a comfortable living environment. The combination of two types of pendulum dampers produces an effective period in a limited space. Eco-friendly building 
Single-use buildings usually concentrate energy consumption during certain hours of the day. However, the multifunctional design of Abe no Harukas improves thermal efficiency and equalizes overall energy consumption, contributing to a significant reduction in CO2 emissions. The building's multi-use design facilitates the incorporation of expansive energy-saving technologies. Waste heat generated throughout the year by air conditioning, essential to department store operations, is reused to produce hot water for the hotel above. Garbage from the restaurants and hotel facilities is effectively used for biogas power generation. Natural air flows vertically through the void in the center core of the office section. Taking fresh natural air into the refresh corner and workplaces enhances comfort and saves energy at the same time. The entrance plaza on the basement floor connects to subway and JR lines and is the departure point for the shuttle elevators. Up to 60 people can ride one of the shuttle elevators directly to the lobby upstairs. The office lobby on the 17th floor. Office workers are welcomed by a spacious hall overlooking the museum garden on the downstairs floor. The elevator banks are divided up into destination floors and are filled with soft natural light. People enjoy looking at artwork dancing in the wind through the elevator's glass panel as they rise up through the echo void. The void is bathed in natural light from the skylight above and through the transparent glass wall. The ever-changing natural lights in the elevator hall and refresh corner are a valuable source of refreshment for the workers. The superb views offered by the full-face glass curtain walls in the workplace promote productivity on the part of those who work there. Passengers arriving at Kintetsu Osaka Abenobashi Station walk across the concourse and are welcomed by the department store facade. The central atrium leading to commercial establishments on the south side connects the tower wing and the existing wing to the department store. This spreads activity and dynamism through the surrounding downtown. The hotel garden on the 38th floor resembles a grassy plain. The magnificent panoramic view from the hotel's guest rooms stretches out over the garden. The 16th floor is a united ground floor with a rooftop grove and the art museum lobby. This lobby is a vital intersection, constantly filled with people visiting the art museum, the observatory, the department store and the offices. The exhibition space is fully equipped to showcase important cultural properties of Japan. The light shielding panels can also be opened to appreciate works of modern art in natural light, set off by the dynamic views of the outside. From the observatory entrance on the 16th floor, the through elevator goes up to the top floor of the building. Once in the elevator, the elevator shaft is open to the car and comes to life with dedicated lighting that builds anticipation of the sky above. The observatory is on the 60th floor. From here, visitors can enjoy panoramic views of the ancient city of Kyoto to the east and on the horizon, the Akashi Strait to the west. The western edge of the floor is installed with transparent glass panels that let visitors experience a sense of floating. The cloister-style observatory is lifted up in the sky and provides impressive views of the cityscape in every direction with the observatory square below.
The square on the 58th floor is an open air space where guests can walk up the hill like wood deck and enjoy a moment of relaxation under the sky. In the evening, the entire observatory floats atop Osaka's countless city lights, creating a dramatic urban nightscape. There were numerous safety issues to be solved in the construction of a record-breaking 300-meter tall building atop a downtown station, and they had to be overcome in the shortest construction period possible. It was necessary to construct the building safely while the station and department store went about their business without interruption. In order to demolish the old wing, the station's platform was extended 30 meters east to integrate train and department store services into the existing main wing. Access routes to the station and store were continually altered in step with the construction process to ensure maximum convenience for department store customers and passengers using the station. One of the major issues was the transportation and processing of the massive amounts of construction materials as the building plans called for maximum use of the site area. A double delivery deck was installed at the basement level for pressure feeding concrete. And the first floor, where tower cranes assembled the steel frames during the day and installed the curtain walls and excavated underground at night. This method effectively utilized time and space to process the huge amounts of construction materials. Setting the building back every 100 meters also facilitated the introduction of a multi-level yard system where the roof sections doubled as construction yards. Construction materials packed into large pallets were efficiently carried from the first floor to the construction yard using a Telfer crane. Plans called for the safe construction of a 30 meter deep geofront space in a high density location. Simultaneous construction of above and underground sections with the inverted basement construction method contributed to significant reductions in the construction period and safe excavation work. Underground excavation involved sequential construction of the outer walls from the top down while supporting earth pressure with earthen retaining walls. The Takenaka soil cement wall method, an environmentally friendly sheathing method developed by the Takenaka Corporation, reuses excavated earth to offer prominent rigidity and sealing properties. It was employed due to the site's proximity to a major municipal subway system. An 8-meter wide cantilever steel protective mount is installed on the above ground section to protect pedestrians from unanticipated falling objects. The CFT column supporting the massive 300-meter-tall, 285,000-ton structure are composed of concrete pressed into high-strength steel pipes that stretch up to 200 meters, forming one of the strongest CFT columns in the world. Concrete is pressure-fed from below ground level right up to a height of 300 meters at a stroke. 
The sheer size of this 300-meter tall skyscraper makes it extremely difficult to set coordinates on the surrounding buildings to act as markers for surveying. A GPS measuring method is therefore introduced to maintain the precision of the steel structure. The slide cover construction method was developed to address safety issues inherent in the construction of skyscrapers in a downtown area directly above a station utilized by many passengers. A protective barrier climbs up to the highest point on the building to ensure the high-rise section is always safely covered during the construction period. While construction at the very top proceeds with the assembly of the steel structure, on the underneath floors, concrete is placed and the exterior curtain walls are installed by winch. This factory in the sky enables the safe completion of several processes simultaneously and in a shorter construction period. We strive to bring together state-of-the-art design and technology in preparation for the spring 2014 opening of Japan's highest vertical echo city, Abeno Harukas, a unique urban environment boasting unparalleled station, department store, art museum, office, hotel and observatory facilities. <laughs>